Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about earthquakes. I just want to say real quick, <sighs> my voice is raspy. My throat is a little sore from sinus drainage. You know, I'm just starting off real good here. I was going to do a totally different video for you guys, but I think this one I could muddle my way through. Hopefully that one when I get this cleared up. Anyway, I'm going to talk about earthquakes today, but I'm not going to talk about them in this simple grade school concept. You guys are smarter than that. You already know that. If you don't, go anywhere online and just type in what causes an earthquake, okay? Also do focus and epicenter because most people don't even know the difference between those two. Focus is where the earthquake actually occurs in the three-dimensional earth and epicenter is just directly above that on the surface. Everybody talks about epicenter. No one talks about focus in the news. Anyway, I digress. I'm going to talk about the Richter scale a little bit. I'm going to explain to you what it is because I need to. And then we're going to talk about the biggest earthquake possible on Earth. All right. First of all, without talking too much about the history of, I believe, a Richter, is that right, scale? It's a what we call a quantitative evaluation of earthquake strength. Now, how we derive this has changed throughout time, but the scale of differences, like the space between a one and a two, a two and a three, a three and a four has not changed, okay? And I'm not gonna get into that, and it's actually complex and rather quite annoying. It messes up with, it screws with geophysicists as well. But anyway, so the Richter scale on Earth, Theoretically, is a 1 to a 10. Can you get smaller than a 1? Yeah, but really nobody cares. Okay. And we'll get back to why this is the max. But basically, this is how it works. A 2 on the Richter scale is not equal to 2 times greater than a 1. So it's not twice as strong. Okay. It's a logarithmic scale. Most of you know what that is, but I'm just going to explain it really quickly. So a, a one is a one. Okay, just leave it there. I'm not going to go into, it, into that. A two on the Richter scale, okay, is 10 times greater than a one. A three is 10 times greater than a two and a hundred times greater than a one. A four is 10 times greater than a three, a hundred times greater than a two and a thousand times greater than a one. Okay. I think you see the pattern emerging here. So by the time we get to a 10, a 10 is uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times greater than a one, which would be in scientific pronunciations and not Britain, <laughs> a billion times more powerful than a one, okay? So that's a pretty big difference between these two, all right? A huge difference, okay? So that in your head, there are literally hundreds of earthquakes at ones and twos that happen every day. You don't know it. Why? Because the average human can't feel anything less than a 2.5. I mean, some people can't even handle less than a 3.0. They won't even notice. Now, there are some people who have claimed around an earthquake and without knowing there was one, they can feel it too. So basically, you're looking between two and three. So these are not very big earthquakes. And then these are not the things that are going to rock your world. All right. And those happen everywhere, all the time. Yes, they focus around plate boundaries earthquakes, but earthquakes can happen in the middle of continents in Illinois. 
uh, I think it was 2010, we had a four point something. And that woke me up in bed. All right, I remember that one. I thought someone had broken into the house, but that didn't damage anything. But that one happened a couple hundred kilometers away. See, in a craton like this that I'm standing on right now, these waves can propagate further, okay? In areas that are not on stable cratons, they tend to dissipate more quickly, the waves, because they reflect off faults and rain. Anyway, talks for other times. So, theoretically, what is the largest earthquake we can have? That's a 10. Theoretically, will a 10 ever occur on Earth? The chances of a 10 occurring on Earth are almost zero. Okay. Now, why is that, Steve? Well, there's several factors that come into how the amount of energy needed to generate an earthquake. The highest earthquake ever recorded was in Chile, and it was a 9.5. Everyone's like, San Andreas Fault, the San Andreas Fault, oh my God, is the Armageddon. San Andreas Fault is the longest fault system in the country, and we generally model these things at a standout perspective as a single fault, but it's really a fault system. So the chances of the whole thing moving at once are essentially zero, <laughs> okay? But it could, theoretically, but the highest it's ever been is a 7.9. Okay, that's still pretty high in San Andreas. And that's 1,300 kilometers. Well, this one wasn't 1,300 kilometers long, and it, and it produced 9.5. Why is that? Because earthquake, earthquake power is related to the length of the fault that slid, because faults are where our planar surfaces, roughly, where movement occurs and has occurred, they don't, 99.9% .9 of faults are non active. So, but it's not just about length, it's also about size and depth. I'll talk a little bit about that here. I'm not going to get too much into that. When you have like this scenario in Chile, once you had, I think it was 1960 that happened, you have a plate subducting under another plate. This is a generic cross section. You know, this is pro, this could be as much as, you know, you know, I don't know, 700 kilometers, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? So earthquakes, basically, the deeper they happen, the stronger they can be. And this has to do with propagation and the fact that S weights can't even move through liquid or air. So the second they hit that, they're done. But P waves, compression waves can, and they will. But when you're shallower, this isn't exactly what happens. This is just to make you understand the concept, different densities with inside the earth, because they're not that much difference in density, but it's difference enough to affect the power of an earthquake. Where densities are not varying very much like on a craton, unless you have some sort of, you know, anyway, it tends to go further, all right? But where densities are less, like you get, a lot of faults, things that can reflect those waves more efficiently, they tend not to go as far. Do great damage where it happens, but not 200 kilometers away. That's why New Madrid is such a red flag, because an 8 could go really far in New Madrid as where an 8 in, along the San Andreas Fault isn't going to leave California that badly. It will, but it's not going to do much damage outside of California. Okay, maybe Las Vegas, but no one cares about that. So, and the depth plays a part too, because the San Andreas is not a subduction zone. It's actually a rift. <laughs> it's just the transform fault part of the rift is what's riding over or under the North American continent. Now, there are, it is a plate boundary in the loose sense of the term. And I'm going to explain to you what it is. So first of all, it's a transform fault. So any earthquakes are not going to happen too deeply. And as we're in Chile, you had the entire mass of a subducting plate. You don't have that here. 
what San Andreas fault is, is it's a rift, or not a rift, it, it's a transform fault. This is a map view. We're not doing cross section. We're looking down from the air. So you get lateral slip on the surface, okay, as one plate moves past another. But this isn't the whole story. You might be like, well, plates move apart like this, Steve. And you're right, they do. But North America is currently riding over what's called the North American Rise, which is a spreading center in the Pacific, which spreads for faster than the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. But it's going under North America. Yes, you can subduct a rift zone. I know that sounds weird, but you can. Now, what's going to happen? We don't know because the Basin and Range Province has widened in North America. North America could split and we could get a new spreading center. I don't know. But anyway, I've actually done a whole video about this, about how I think North America will look in the future. But anyway, what happens here in these transform faults are actually pretty normal. They're everywhere. Everywhere. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge has them. So what you'll get, let me draw a general earth for you. Okay, there's earth. And what happens is you get a rift. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll start with the rift. You get a rift, and obviously it'd be this big, but in your plates move apart. North America, Eurasia, okay? Just for, you know, and obviously it's not a straight line. It does this, has to do triple junctions, talks for other times. But this plate, this isn't the whole story, okay? This rift. Earth is a sphere. And those of you who have listened to my lectures in the past, especially my tectonic ones, will just say this is the North Pole. Earth's plates, as they spread apart, one spreads apart from another, so they all have different ones of these, rotate around Euler poles. And only in a rigid crust will this happen. Okay, and Earth has a very rigid crust and well, lithosphere, and a lithosphere. And that's where most earthquakes occur is within the lithosphere. Theoretically, they can go down to about 700 kilometers, but then the mantle gets too plastic and they can't generate because there's no faulting that far. There's no faults that far down to generate them. But an Euler pole doesn't have to be oriented to the, to the north. As things rift apart, now this is where your new crust is forming, but your original boundaries would be over here somewhere. You know, this would be North America coastline. This would be Africa, Eurasia. So let's get rid of this for now. So as this happens, your Euler pole would be right here. And I believe the one for North America and Eurasia is in Greenland. But so you're, and Earth is not a plane. So they spread apart like this. In other words, near the pole, the spreading is less than away from the pole, okay? And there is no southern pole because plates don't, we have no plates the size of the planet or half the size of the planet, okay? So what happens is, a side effect of that is the rift, put it back down the middle again, will, our rift will make it more accurate this time, okay? The rift will develop these transform faults you know, like this too and this they're basically some of them go all the way across them don't they're a side effect of this euler pole rotation and deforming a rigid crust because if you take an orange and rip it roughly spherical i know it's not i don't care rip off the skin in one piece the best you can so you can almost get it in one piece try to flatten it out what's going to happen you're going to tear the orange more because an orange is not flat, okay? And the earth is not. So we get these transform faults. We get extra tearing, if you will. And in San Andreas is a really long one of these, okay? So those generally do not generate powerful earthquakes. San Andreas, like I said, is kind of a special because it's on a continent and in the ocean, which is excessively rare. But I would be shocked. I would, if I lived a million years, I would bet everything that you would never, ever see, ever even see an 8.5 on the San Andreas Fault. Crap. I would, with reluctancy, bet you'd never see, really, even an 8.1. 
I think an eight's possible, but an 8.5 definitely isn't. So you can't even get that. It's just not long enough. Well, it's long enough. It's not deep enough. There's no depth, you're not subducting. You get these big ones at subduction zones, okay? So we're gonna have to rely on a subduction zone. San Andreas is out. Anybody talking about the big one can just big off because whatever, it's media, blah, blah. Never get your science in the media, okay guys? So 9.5 is the biggest we have. Has one bigger than that occurred? Probably, I would bet money on it. But I would bet if I lived a million years, I would bet everything that I would not live to see anything greater than a 9.8. Maybe, maybe a 9.85 on the current scale, okay? I wouldn't even think I'd see a 9.9. .9. Why is that, Steve? Let's draw our earth again, all right? Here's our earth. Uh, well, it's not that much of an oblate spheroid with a fat southern hemisphere. So our San Andreas Fault, let's just put this here. Earth's circumference is about 40,000 kilometers. I think the diameter is 12 to 13, somewhere in there, something like that. Well, San Andreas Fault is, is about 1,300. So it's about a tenth about a tenth the diameter of the Earth. Not, not circumference, it's a lot smaller than that. And we only had a, you know, whatever the hell I wrote on the board before, I already forgot, 7.9. So, you know, we have 7.9 out of there. So, you know, in order to have an 8.9, we would have to be 10 times longer than that. So we'd have to be the diameter of the Earth. I know my diameter is not diameter -y, <laughs> but the point is it would have to be 10 times greater than San Andreas Fault. So about the diameter of the Earth. That's how big San Andreas Fault would have to be to produce an 8.9, okay? We don't have any faults this big. Now the one in Chile isn't that big because the fault itself is pretty, see subduction, where subduction happens that technically that contact is a fault. We just don't think of it as one. And those are thousands of kilometers long, okay? Because when the subducting plate goes under, generates an earthquake, that whole subduction zone does not slip at once. It can't, it's physically impossible by the nature of the earth. So a chunk of it does. And, you know, it's deeper. So the Chile one, I don't, what was the size of it? Anyway, it doesn't really matter because I'm about to do it to the San Andreas Fault anyway, because that's what everybody's familiar with. So to get a 9.9 .9 from the San Andreas Fault, so it's 10 times more powerful then an 8.9, so to get a 9.9 .9 on San Andreas, using San Andreas, we would have to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We would have to, ten diameters of the Earth. So we'd have to go, so ten diameters, I don't know, I'm just gonna use 13 times 10 would be 130,000 kilometers, and we have 40. 130 is about three times. So I wrap around the earth about three times. Okay. I saw that made me look like I was wrapping around the earth. I wasn't. I should have drawn 10 of those, <laughs> but I didn't. So about three times, three or four times around the earth. We have no fault that big. Now, can we get a 10 from something smaller? Yes, in a subduction zone, more than likely, okay? But that's got to be a big, big earthquake. Or it would be a big earthquake, but it's got to be a big, big slip along a fault. That subducting plate, a large portion of that has to move. And if it does that, it's going to stop. So what happens is, as a plate goes under, 
that slab pull that's going on in the ridge push as it goes under you can only do that so fast okay so it's going in and this thing is massive okay so it's going down slowly most of it just goes down slowly but every once in a while part gets cooked up caught up and that's where that builds up that pressure and then when that fails it catches up with the rest that's already gone down so it doesn't happen over the whole thing simultaneously it just won't these plates are too big okay so that's why it doesn't happen all over the entire plate boundary and even if it did you'd get a 10 okay uh maybe a little more i don't know exactly yeah but the point is it's not going to be much bigger than a 10 if even a 10. okay 10 about the maximum an 11. remember an 11 is 10 times stronger than a 10. so you already had to have wrapped around four times around the earth <laughs> now you'd have to wrap around 40 times around the earth we don't have a fault 40 you know 40 diameters of, or that would wrap around the earth 40 times okay we don't matter of fact i believe in 11 it would destroy the planet unquestionably and if we had and if space wasn't empty and can propagate ways we'd probably destroy a good chunk of the solar system okay there's just not enough mass to build up and fail simultaneously to do that and a 12, I think if I remember correctly, a 12 would destroy the solar system, maybe even the galaxy. I forget. The point is you're never going to get a 13 anywhere in the universe because the universe would have to fail. Okay? It's just, that's how it is. Okay? Because you keep increasing in orders of magnitude. All right? So that's why, long blabbity blabble, why you can't get an earthquake anywhere really much larger than a 10 it doesn't matter even a, even any other planet wouldn't be much more than a 10. it just physically can't i don't care how big the planet is okay we don't have planets the entire size of galaxies <laughs> well you probably get an 11 off something like that well we don't because if we did that would generate so much heat we'd see it but anyway um yeah i think that's it if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope you guys learned <laughs> something. And I'll get that one later. I'm sorry. The other one I was talking about earlier.